In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these unique glam and farmhouse candle holder decor pieces. If you want to learn how I made them, well, then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. And, well, I'm finally breaking down and doing a little bit of fall decor DIY stuff. I'm like going out kicking and screaming from summer, let me just tell you. Anyway, I hope you like these. It kind of came to me randomly while I was walking through Dollar Tree looking at things. I don't even know why it came to me, but I'm excited to show them to you because it's a little something funky and different. So before we get to the project though, I would love if you join the Glue Dot family by hitting that subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. We'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Also, if you're enjoying my videos, hit the like button, give me the thumbs up, and leave me a comment down below because I really love hearing from you. Don't forget also, once a month, I will do a drawing for a cute little bling owl keychain. The link for that is down below and you only have to enter once and you're good for the year. And also there's a link down below for the Facebook group. So I would love for you to join our Facebook group and show me your recreations of the projects you learn on my channel. So without further ado, let's do the project. First thing we're going to be doing on this project to get started is we're going to be painting the glass candle holder any color you want but I'm choosing to do mine white and also we're going to be spray painting this but we're going to do that afterwards I just want to give a good head start on this glass piece to dry so I usually like to use a paper towel and some alcohol to clean off my, anything that I'm going to paint that's glass or anything like that so you can either do that or wash it with soap and water whichever you prefer so while we're waiting on that to dry, what we're gonna be doing is cutting out the flat part of this tray. And there is already a ridge line in there. So you're gonna do as best you can and cut it out as straight as possible. And be careful because this metal is a bit sharp. So if you feel uncomfortable, you can use some gloves. It's not like super dangerous, but you don't wanna slide along it either. A small little tip that I discovered is to not close, not allow the scissors to close all the way because it leaves like a little um, funky little marking in there. So by just going along and open your scissors really wide, you get a nice even line. Now, you want to save these side pieces because we're going to be using a couple of those. You don't need all of them, but just set those aside for now. So what we're going to do is find the center point and we're going to just cut directly through the center of those circles trying to go, if you keep in the center you'll get a pretty straight line. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to shape these into our cylinder. So. If you happen to have one of these Dollar Tree vases, great. If not, and you have maybe a drinking glass that is more kind of straight up and down, it will be helpful to use just something to give you that curve so that you don't get any weird dents in your form. So I'm just gonna take this and roll it around there just to help me get that nice smooth cylinder shape. Then decide how big around you want this to be. So if you'd like it to be really large, that's fine. The only thing with that is because this is so flimsy, it will be a little more delicate. I'm gonna go for a little smaller because I feel that it will be sturdier that way. What you're gonna do is you're gonna then overlap your pieces and line up the holes to make it whatever size you want. And I'm actually overlapping three of the sections there. I think that's a, a nice diameter for what I want. So you can use a bit of the E6000 and your hot glue for this. You just have to be a little bit quick once you put that, that hot glue yeah. on there. You don't want your glue to ooze out, so try not to use too much. Just a little bit should do it. And we are gonna be taping this in place as well. And you don't wanna overlap your hot glue with your 
E6000 or Gorilla Glue or whatever you're using because otherwise it won't stick. So a lot of times you see crafters do that and it looks like they're putting both and sometimes they are putting it on top of each other, but it won't stick. So, all right, lining them up really well. And I'm gonna just stick those together. The, the hot glue is not sticking all that great. So I'm gonna be using my scotch tape to help hold that. So a little piece on each end there, wrapping it over the edge and just folding it down. And it really doesn't show once you've painted. And the other thing is our trim is gonna go around this top part, so it won't show at all that you have tape there. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is going out and spray painting these. Now, I'm gonna do mine white. You can do whatever color you like to suit your decor. And I will be back. So while we're waiting on those to dry, we're gonna take our adhesive diamond wrap that whichever style you chose, this can be used for both the glam design one and for the farmhouse style one. So because you can decide which way you want your acorns to go. So if you want, don't mind your acorns being sideways, you're gonna cut this strip long ways and if you want them to be facing upright, you're gonna cut your strip this way. So we're gonna be cutting this in such a way that the extra will fold over the top on the sharp part. So how we're gonna do that is cut, so you have one row and then the two rows of the bling wrap and just above those two rows of bling wrap, but right next to the acorns, you're gonna go ahead and cut. So you're gonna have a, a piece like this. So this side is gonna be folding over the edge that is sharp to help from it being sharp, <laughs> to help from getting cut or anyone getting injured. Then you're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna need a couple of, the, I think we're gonna probably need about three strips of those in order to do the top and bottom. So you will have a row here that has one side of bling wrap, one side of no bling wrap on each side of the acorn. So you're just gonna put that aside because we can use this for embellishments or for other things. So we're gonna make another one of these pieces here now. And just a quick note, I didn't pay attention to this when I was buying it, but when you're buying your little bling wrap here with the things on it, double check because there are spots that are missing stones on it and I didn't pay attention to that when I was getting mine. So just a note to self, so my pieces are dry here, spray painted white. I'm gonna be doing, as I said, two versions for you, one in the farmhouse and one in the glam style, but so far we can still do them the same. You're gonna be taking your piece that has the double bling wrap on the top, and what you're gonna do is every couple spaces, just give it a little cut through that top one. It doesn't have to be exactly, maybe every three spaces or whatever, and this will help it to follow around the curve of your cylinder so that it lays nicely. And then we're gonna peel this off here. What we're gonna be doing here is putting this trim around the upper edge. You're gonna line this up, making sure that that, you can see through it a little bit. I don't know if you can see through on camera, but when you look at it, from the inside, you have one layer of the bling wrap that's sticking up, up above. You're gonna put this all the way around in that same way. And then what we're gonna be doing is just tucking down because we did those little cuts. See if yours needs extra glue or not. All right, so that one piece made it almost all the way around. We do have one little space left here. So we're just gonna take another piece of what we have left here and measure out how much we're gonna need. And then go ahead and just fill that in with that extra little piece. It really won't show. It probably won't fit exactly so that you have the two rows of bling wrap, but nobody's gonna notice that. And if they do, marry them because they're super observant. Or maybe you don't want them to be super observant, so you don't want to marry them. All right, so we got that filled in here. 
And now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So here's what it looks like having both the top and bottom done. And what we're going to do now is do a little bit of embellishment using some of our leftover pieces. And you're going to be cutting out little pieces like this to use as embellishments. And then you find wherever you want to put them. So there is this spot right here that is crying out for it. You can either center it, you could put it up higher, put it whatever makes you happy, what looks good to you. Because I'm a firstborn and I'm really like, oh, particular, I'm just gonna put mine centered. <laughs> I don't know if other people who are not firstborns are as weird as us firstborns, but I can say I'm weird because I am weird, and I don't know if the rest of you firstborns are weird too, but that's what we've got. So if you wanna put more of them around, if you wanna put one on this back side too, maybe for the people that are sitting on the other side and are gonna be looking at it. So for this other one, I'm actually just gonna use some of these leftover pieces and do it, and um, it won't have as much of the bling on it. So we are gonna leave that one row of bling because that's gonna be folding over. So these are both of them and you can see that one I did a thinner trim on and then the other one, the thicker trim. So I'm going to actually make this one into my glam version and this one, believe it or not, into my farmhouse version. What I'm gonna do now, the glam house one, we're gonna put aside for a few minutes, but the farmhouse style one, we're going to be spray painting this white as well. So ideally for the farmhouse one, I, I wasn't originally gonna go in this direction, but you could have put all of this on first and then paint it all at the same time. That would have saved you some time, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. And then while that's drying, we'll work on the glam version. So I did decide to paint this a little differently. Um, I'm gonna show you both in the end, but this one I only painted from the underside to have it just have a little bit of a different look. We'll see, I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not, but we thought we'd give it a try. And what we're gonna, oh, also another note, do go ahead and glue this down, this edging down, because it starts to pop up. For some reason, the adhesive is separating from the bling wrap when we fold it over. The bling, the adhesive is staying stuck, but the bling wrap is popping anyway, up. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna be working on attaching these two together, and we're gonna be using one of our extra pieces that we had left over from the sides that I had told you to put aside. So go ahead and flatten that piece out. And be careful because that edge is a bit sharp and you can go ahead and cut the ends off because you won't need those curved ends. And we're also going to be cutting off this rounded side here. So get this nice and flat and cut off this rounded side as well. And what you're gonna do is fold down a little bit of an edge, only about between a quarter and a half inch, doesn't really matter how much exactly, but we're gonna be using this folded edge and we're gonna be putting it inside here and measuring across to the other side and make a little mark with your nail, a little crimp in there. And you're also gonna make a fold on the other side. This is what we're gonna be putting to attach our um, top here to the candle holder. So fold, make your little crimp there and cut that off so that you have also a little bit of a lip. So you should have a piece that looks like this. We're gonna do two of those pieces. First, you're gonna make sure this fits in there. Well, it should fit snugly, but not to the point where it's distorting your shape. So what we're gonna do now is take one of those pieces and go to the bottom side. So whichever side, for me, the acorn's facing that way. This will be my bottom side. And I'm gonna go in using my E6000 and my hot glue. Put a little on each side and do not put your hot glue over your E6000 or it will not stick. Then you're gonna go ahead and place this inside and attach it to the side walls. Try and make sure it's as level as possible. Okay, so it should be stuck in there like that. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the other piece, but we're gonna crisscross it. So here's what it looks like once you've got those pieces glued in. And that's what's gonna be holding up our lampshade on top of this. So we're gonna add our E6000 to the top 
part around this edge and spacing out a little bit so that you have also some place to put your hot glue. And then go ahead and find center and put your lampshade on top. So for right now, here's how this one's looking. This is our glam version, but I've tried painting the whole thing on the other one. So we're gonna see, we can decide which one we like better. So here you can see what the candlestick looks like completely painted as compared to this one. But anyway, we're gonna work right now on this piece, which I ended up spray painting white, which I told you this is our farmhouse version. Now you can see some of these are popping up and that's what I was talking about as far as getting in there and getting those glued down because the adhesive is still stuck, but the darn little bling wraps popped up. So poor design on their part, I guess. Okay, so to make this a little more farmhouse feel, we're gonna be doing a couple things. First, we're gonna be taking, I'm just using this Apple Barrel um, Burnt Umber paint. I think I got this at Walmart and a little bristle brush here. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of dry brushing. Now, a couple people asked me how to dry brush or what dry brushing is. So, sorry, I probably should have used a different tray, but you put a small amount of your paint on there and dab a dry brush into it, just a little bit, and then off to the side, just really dab that off. Um, you can do it onto a piece of paper or something, but basically your brush is fairly dry. And what I'm gonna be doing is going over just my little acorn area up here and giving that a little bit more of a, a rustic feel as opposed to a glam feel. Now you can stop with it just at that point, or if you want to, you can even paint a little bit of the dry brushing onto the white part. I'm just gonna leave it. I feel like not overdoing it on this one. And then we're gonna take our either nautical rope. I think this is left over from a big roll that I had gotten at Walmart. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna go around and add a little bit of this as trim to just really kind of finish off that farmhouse look and I'm gonna be gluing this trim all the way around. So just a little tip, something I like to do, when I get to my ends, I don't cut my nautical rope off just um, straight like that. I like to cut it off at an angle because I feel like it's much easier to hide that seam afterwards. So you can see that the seam of my nautical rope or my twine ends where that is and you can't even really tell because I cut it at a, on a diagonal. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing around this top part as well. And then I'm gonna show you these all finished up. If you're enjoying my channel, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really makes a difference for my channel and for me being seen. So please give a girl a little bit of help. <laughs> Also, um, aside from the thumbs up, leave me a comment. Let me know which of these versions you prefer and how you would do them differently, what you might change on it. And also join the Glue Dot family. It's, it's fun. If you don't believe me, ask everybody else. They'll tell you. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish this up and I'm gonna show you them all done.